Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is our year to shine and we're already a good way into June and I have not brought you Cheryl Richardson's Art of Extreme self-care challenge yet for this month. So I wanted to do that in today's video. I will add a little commentary here at the beginning that I, yeah, I haven't been on the channel in a, probably over a week. My, my dad was visiting and that was really sweet. And in fact, we went to a few places on his list, the, the book, the story book that um, I, the project that I have from his envelope. So that was neat. And then I also have to admit, I have started reading the Wayne Dyer book. I even felt like I wasn't absorbing it so much when I was physically reading it. So I bought the audiobook and I've been listening to it. And I'm a little bit, I'm a little bit hesitant to bring it to the channel now because I'm feeling like it's just, I don't know how I will present it. It feels like it's way over my head. Um, sometimes I'm listening to it and I'm just hearing like blah, 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 blah. So I have to maybe rethink that. I love him and I thought the book was going to be different than it already is and I'm about 12 verses into it so I guess I'll do a little bit more but that's why I haven't done a video yet on that book and if I switch to a different book I will choose a book by him and and I will maybe I would do like one video to summarize this book because I don't know it's way over my head to try to present some of it so far anyway okay back to Cheryl Richardson I can handle this book this one is our sixth challenge of the year and it's called the absolute no list and i know i did a few videos last year about having boundaries and being able to say no and not letting yourself get to the point where you're so over scheduled that you're dreading anybody asking you of something and we talked about too about like giving yourself some time when somebody's asking you something and setting up a um a precedent that you may not be available, things like that. Um, so this one is about coming up with things that you are absolutely not going to stand for anymore. And one of the things from Cheryl's list that I remember is that she refuses to bring any junk mail in the house. So she set up something like out, I think even near the mailbox where, or right outside the door, where she just goes through it, gets rid of it, it's recycled right away. Maybe the trash uh, pickup is right there. Um, so it's sitting with the things that you know that you need to stop doing or that you just can't live with anymore. So here's some examples. So it's, I will no longer rush. I will no longer jump out of bed in the morning and I will give myself time and space that I need to start the day. I will no longer live without pets. Maybe yours is you will no longer live with pets. You never know. She says, I will no longer compromise my needs to keep peace with everyone or anyone. She doesn't eat meat anymore, so she will no longer eat meat. She will no longer balance her accounts and pay her bills. She's gonna have someone else do that. I can imagine if you're that busy she has, you know, tours and things like that. You don't really want to have to be keeping up with those things. She doesn't want to anymore argue with people who see debating as a sport. Using credit cards unless she can pay them off in the full at the end of the month. Keep anything in my home that I don't love or need. We just talked all about that with the joy of less. Um, keep my mouth shut when someone is out of line. So that's a that's something like it's like she knows that she's gonna have that that courage and gumption to do something about it she doesn't want to go to events anymore that require hours of idle chit chat <laughs> she doesn't want to tolerate or participate in gossip she doesn't want to deal with difficult life situations alone she says she's not gonna hire anyone be it a lawyer doctor healthcare provider or what have you who treats her with disrespect that's a really good one um, 
I will no longer take calls during meals, she said. She will no longer accept verbal abuse from a boss or coworker. No longer go to work when, when I'm sick. Yeah, I know that feeling. I mean, sometimes you feel like you have to or there's too many obligations on you and you don't wanna let other people down, but that's a good one. No longer keep my opinions to myself when they don't align with those of others in the room. No longer let social norms dictate what I should or shouldn't be interested in, whether it's clothes, art, music, or the like. I love what I love. No longer invest time in relationships that aren't aligned with who I am and who I want to be. No longer accept wasteful packaging at restaurants, stores, and so on. And no longer finish reading books that lose my interest. Do you ever feel that way where you're, well, here we go, and it's not that I'm um, losing interest in the Wayne Dyer book, but do you ever feel like you get so far in a book and you're like, I can't give up, I have to get to the end. But it could be just like a movie. You could also turn it off and just never know what happens. No longer feel the need to check email multiple times a day. No longer eat when I'm not hungry. No longer getting caught up in other people's drama. No longer feel an obligation to spend time with family members or friends who choose to live in chaos. <coughs> Excuse me. No longer feel bad about saying no when no is what's best for me. Hmm. No longer let my mind be on work when I'm not working. That's a good one. No longer let TV networks di dictate what I watch and when I watch my favorite shows. You know, and today, this was written a while back, but today we have so many options for streaming and watching things later. No longer have my email program set to automatically receive new messages. I choose when I get my mail. This is kind of like my boundary where I don't have a, a device with me when I'm away from home that gets emails and things. No longer keep clothes I hope into, to fit into someday. That was one of our things also from the last book. No longer throw away anything that can be recycled. That's good. No longer buy cars that aren't fuel efficient. And no longer spend time with people who talk at me instead of with me. So that's just an example of her list. She says the concept of creating a list with these absolute no's is important. It serves as a potent reminder of what you no longer do so that you can protect your quality of life. It can be eye-opening and helpful to read about what others consider an absolute no, especially if you have trouble creating your own list. That's why I asked several friends to share their examples. Yeah, that's a good idea too. You could share them like in a group and you might like just hearing some of those ones that Cheryl has, it might be like that in your friend group. You might say, oh, that's a really good one. This is an actually, it's a short one this month, but here's our challenge. The first thing you'll want to do is to spend a week looking at the activities that you no longer do, no longer want to do, or would like to give up at some point in the future. In addition, pay attention to the sources of frustration in your life the same old arguments, the typical commitments you make that backfire, or the situations that always leave you feeling drained or resentful. If you're tired of volunteering your services, that, that they don't have their act together like an organization that's just a makeshift, for instance, this is an important, inf it's important information to know when developing your no list. You'll want to add something like, I no longer volunteer for any organization that doesn't have a concrete vision plan and sufficient staffing. That's very well said. And you know, I don't know that I sat down and wrote a, an absolute no list when we went through this book a few years ago. I think I'll write one because I shared with you guys last year about how I will no longer, I will no longer be on a board of directors. So I try to not join groups that have meetings about scheduling events and things like that. Like I would add that to my list also. When looking for absolute no's, pay close attention to how you feel in your body. Look for those times when you feel tension in your neck or shoulders, tightness in your arms, aching in your head or butterflies in your stomach. For example, if you feel edgy and short-tempered every time tax season rolls around because of the work involved in preparing your taxes, it may be time to stop doing them. <laughs> You'll, I mean, I don't think she means like don't file your taxes, but you know, have someone else do it. 
Next time, look back over the examples in your notebook. Okay, so wait a minute. You'll want to add this to your list. I no longer prepare my own taxes. So next, look over the examples in your notebook. So you're first taking, uh, making a list of things that irritate you. Remember that list I told you about that's in my planner where if something needs a solution, I try to write down, like I want to fix this so that it makes something simpler. It's kind of like that. Don't forget to go through the back, go through the examples that were mentioned earlier in this chapter so that you can include the ones that you checked off that resonated with you. Finally, post your list in a place where you'll, where you'll see it every day for at least the next month and be sure to take five or 10 minutes each day to read through. As you do, imagine installing these new rules in your brain like a self-care software upgrade, a program that will help you run your life more efficiently and effectively. The goal is to develop an absolute no list that over time makes you feel safe, protected, taken care of, and free to be yourself. So what do you think? Are you going to make an absolute no list? I think when you're making it, it's, well, I don't want to put certain parameters around it, but in my mind, I'm thinking it should probably be things that you feel very solid in, not something that you're aspiring to. Like it's, it's a resolution that you've come to because of experience. It's not like, um, it's not like you're trying to, to set a resolution that you might not be able to keep like that. No, I mean, even though she said, you know, you're, you have to see it and get, get it into you like a software upgrade. It seems like it should just be, it's almost like a mission. Like you've come to the point in your life where you absolutely know that it's time to say no to certain things. The absolute no list. Hope you like that one. I will be back for another video as soon as I figure out what I'm doing about the book or another book. And uh, also just trying to, my body has its own idea about when I'm healthy and when I'm not. So also just sort of nursing myself still. But I love you all and it's not because I don't want to talk to you. So I will see you on another video soon. Love to you all. Bye-bye.